Psytime has rocketed over 75% from its lows at $75 last year. Now the question you have is the stock still a buy now? Now Psytime is one of the largest holdings in my million dollar growth stock portfolio. And I think this video is gonna help you understand why that's the case. Psytime reported earnings last night. In this video today, I'm gonna take that one hour earnings call. I'm gonna compress that and give you all the highlights, 60 minutes worth of data, give you the highlights in 10 minutes. I'm also gonna look at the valuation and a chart and I'm gonna tell you where I think the stock is headed next. Is the stock a buy now? And is the stock a good long-term investment? Let's dig in. All right, so side time is up over 75% since we were buying the stock around 75 hours in Discord. This video will be extremely helpful for you to understand the business and the long-term prospects for the company. So I call semiconductors the new oil. And I think that side time can be an important part of this. I think there's a lot of total addressable market left in this segment. It deals with precision timing. And they work with some big companies like Apple and Tesla. They've got several new products. You look at autonomous driving, 5G, enterprise, internet of things. They're even getting into military, aerospace, and defense. So if you look at the revenue, it was 60.8 million. That's still 30% growth over the previous year. But the second half was very challenging. It's part of the reason why the stock sold off. Sidetime's introduced four new products since their last earnings call. And they have a total of nine new products that are just ramping up. So in 2021, their SAM was a billion dollars. Of course, SAM is different than TAM, and I want to address that really quick. So total addressable market is TAM, okay? That's 100% revenue opportunity market share, basically if there is no competition. The SAM is the serviceable addressable market. And that represents the portion of the TAM that can be served by the company's products or services. It's a much better metric to use. So in 2022, they grew that SAM from a billion dollars to $2 billion. And you can see where I highlighted, they're on track to be at $4 billion by 2024, the end of 2024. And this is important because you'll hear it a lot through the earnings call, but highly differentiated precision timing products. They believe that their products are the best in the market and they have pricing power for that. They also have stickiness with their customers. So I mentioned they have four new products. They're also doing five more in 2023. So they've got a total of nine new products. So when you think of these products, they're going to be focused on comms enterprise, automotive, and aerospace defense. They talk a lot about their funnel and design wins. They're continuing to win new designs and they're, they're growing more designs. So this company has a lot of room to grow because not only with their existing products, they continue to build new products. So in this last quarter, sales in industrial, automotive, and aerospace segment were 20.3 million. That's 33% of sales. For communications and enterprise, it was 15.8 million. That's 26% of sales. Now their gross margins are 63.1%. That's down two points, but three years ago, they were in the 30%. Non-gap gross margins for the full year, 65.2%, very solid. So when it comes to guidance, we're going to see an impact over the next couple quarters. The macro environment remains somewhat challenging. It's clear Clearly having an impact on industry-wide semiconductor demand. Now I'm doing session five in the Fired Up Wealth Conference this Friday, tomorrow. That's going to cover semiconductors and the state of semiconductors and it talks specifically about this. We had supply chain issues and a lot of companies over-ordered. They overstocked so they didn't run out of supply and so you're going to have to work through that. So right here, subcontract manufacturers over-ordered when supply bottlenecks eased last year. This is going to lead to customers reducing order rates as they work through excess inventory. That means that sales to the largest customers will be nominal in both Q1 and Q2. So they're seeing in the back half of 2023, they're saying it's going to pick back up to the norm. Once they work through this inventory, sales should rebound to normal levels starting in Q3 2023. They've been telling us this is going to come. So the guidance is a little bit light and gross margins are also going to be down slightly as well. So a quote here from the CEO, I'd like to conclude my remarks by saying that even though we're going through this short-term dip, we firmly believe that our long-term growth growth story is intact. Our process and product developments continue as planned as we expect to introduce at least five new product families this year. This will expand our SAM from $1 billion to $4 billion by the end of 2024. What's the market cap now? As of right now, the market cap is about $2.8 billion. I'll get to the valuation and a chart here in a couple minutes. So several different times in the earnings call, it talks about the excess inventory and the overordering. So back in 2021, there are shortages in the industry and the shortages ease a lot of folks, a lot of our customers and certainly subcontract manufacturers took advantage of the supply and they overordered. This ended up with too much inventory that has to get worked out of the system, worked down. So they're giving us guidance the best they can, but there is some risk there. They also talk a lot about their largest customer, how they overbought. And also seasonally, that largest customer has weaker demand in the first two quarters of the year. So who is their largest customer? Of course, it's Apple. It's about 14% of their sales. What's interesting about this is Apple uses their MEMS products, Sci-Time MEMS products on everything except 
except the iPhone. And Apple was actually using side time for iPhones until they had an incident with an MRI machine. But when you think about all their Apple products, whether it's your Apple Watch, your ear pods, your iMac, your tablet, your iPad, that's all on side time mems. Another very interesting customer of side time is Tesla. Tesla is using side time for the Tesla Dojo system. And that was featured at Tesla's AI day in 2022. They're also getting much more involved with military aerospace and defense. And the thing about their military aerospace and defense products, nothing can really even come close to what side time can do. So when analysts asked about competition and if side time's worried about competition, listen to what the CEO says here. The way I see it, there's some products of side times that have no comparable product. I would say that's significant in comms and enterprise, also in auto and clearly in the military aerospace business. That's also true with some of our other products, but let's just focus on one. So we're talking about these quartz products here. Okay. On this, we see no competition and we see no quest for lower pricing because our customers clearly understand how unique our products are and that they're providing value. A lot of side times chips are in higher quality, higher end type products and their customers are willing to pay a little bit extra for the best right here. We sell on the higher end of that customer's product, which means we also don't see any pricing pressure. That's why their margins are able to be in the 60% plus something. I also want to point out here, guys, they have $564 million in cash and cash equivalents. That's pretty solid for a market cap less than $3 billion. So another question here from an analyst talked about growth and if they could keep growing their product set. Now they went from less than 150, they call it applications, different products to over 300. And the analyst is asking if they could double it again. And basically they say, well, we can't guarantee that we can double it again, but our pipeline is very healthy. They're continuing to design more products and to win more of those designs. Our funnel is very strong, right? Our funnel continues to grow very, very solidly year over year. Every year that we've been here, we've been growing a lot. And that's no surprise given that we've been adding new products, we've been marketing stronger and so on. They're getting more of a name for themselves. It's a pretty small company still. We start working more with companies like Tesla and sure Apple's their largest customer. It's 14% concentration. That certainly is a risk, but it's also great to be attached to a high quality company like that as well. And if you look at that concentration over the last couple of years, it's actually shrank significantly. So they're expanding more and more outside of Apple and getting new customers and selling more and more products. I think for a $3 billion market cap, the management team is one of the strongest teams that you might see in a smaller cap type company. The CEO closed with saying that he feels very comfortable. Obviously the decline in our largest customers revenue is not to our liking. And they talk specifically in this about how Apple is going to have a slowdown naturally. They're going to have a slowdown over the next couple of quarters, but the end of end of 2023, you know, Q3 and Q4, they expect that demand to pick back up. As I mentioned earlier, it's also seasonally slower for Apple in those first two quarters as well, but they're working through that inventory. Another thing they talked about on the earnings call is wafers. So they've increased their inventory and some people might look at a balance sheet and not understand why their inventory is at $57.7 million and it might be a red flag. So it's important to cover this. Okay. Last quarter, they've got the inventory at 57.7 million. The reason for that. So they bought wafers from Bosch and Taiwan Semiconductor. So their CMOS wafers are from Taiwan Semiconductor. Their standard ones are from Bosch. They did that to provide a buffer stock meaning to have that in inventory just in case there were supply chain disruptions again. And it mentions here, if there's any type of geopolitical issues out there, if there's any type of supply chain issues, they have wafer stock that can support a number of quarters worth of sales. And you say, wait a minute, but here's the thing. The wafers do not go bad. Secondly, 80% of the business is single source. And as we head into the comms enterprise, automotive and aerospace defense markets. So these are new markets, new industry segments for these guys. They're really expanding in these areas. It's important for us to reassure our customers that they're in safe hands. And the third is less defensive and more playing offense. Nobody knows whether the back half of this year is big, the curve, right? We definitely expect it to be more than the first half, but there's a case to be made that there could be a big snapback at the end of 2023. This gives side time a great position to be able to capitalize on that. And what it really comes down to is if they have a customer that wants to have a big order, they want to make sure that they have the supply to meet that order. It's giving those customers peace of mind to know that they they can go to side time and get what they want, exactly what they want and when they need it. So next I'm gonna go through valuation and a chart. Now I want to invite you guys to join us in our private community. We're gonna do a semiconductor deep dive, state of the semiconductor sector. It's gonna release Friday tomorrow. It's gonna to be about an hour long and it's me presenting the whole industry, breaking it down in eight different segments, giving you my take on where the state of the semiconductor industry is at. So definitely check out patreon.com forward slash fired up wealth and join us there. I also need to announce that this video 
is sponsored by The Motley Fool. If you'd like to see the 10 best stocks to buy now, visit fool.com forward slash fired up wealth. A reminder, they don't tell me what to make, what stocks to cover, what to tell you guys. They're a great partner and they allow me to make content like this for free on YouTube. So check those guys out. So side times over $130 a share. And like I mentioned earlier, it was $75 not too long ago. It's up 7% today. Market cap 2.8 billion. PE ratio is a 65. Now the 52 week high was $270.92. The 52 week low was $73.10. But if you zoom that chart out, you can see guys that the end of November 2021, this was over $300 a share. So that was a massive drop from $300 to $73. So is side time stock a buy now at $131? I will say this, I'm very bullish on this stock long term. It's one of my top holdings in my million dollar portfolio. You always have to be careful chasing. I do think that by 2024, the numbers are going to be very strong, much stronger with this company. And you could see the stock quite a bit higher, even from these levels. Now, with that said, in Discord and even on YouTube here, I was telling you guys to target below $100 DCA and around $75 was that sweet spot, that pound the table type moment. And it got down to $73. So I was buying this heavily under $100, especially as it got closer to $75. And of course, it's bounced really hard. And we drew this up. This was months back. We drew this up all the way back in August of 2022 in Shard Day. Again, check out patreon.com forward slash fired up wealth. Join us in Discord. Join us every single Wednesday for Chart Day. But we drew this up. We said that it's going to you know, have some, some problems for a while. The stock's going to go lower. And we said that it could be 75 or less. You know, glad I waited. I was buying it right around $100 and I bought heavier as it went lower. We played this thing really well. And we said that it could even go a little bit lower than 75. It really didn't go much lower though. It bottomed out around $73. This this R3 in the Fibonacci is around $138. You're probably going to see some consolidation here at some point. I'd be careful chasing. We've got big cap earnings, things like that. The market's ripped really hard. If you're looking at a five-year holding and you say, should I buy the stock today? Will it be higher in five years? I think the answer is yes. I also think that there's an opportunity to get this stock maybe a little bit lower on a pullback. So you have to use some caution. I'm not, I'm not a financial advisor. I can't tell you what to buy or sell. Do I like the stock right here at $130? As a long-term investor, the answer is yes. Would I go all in right here at $130? The answer is no, I would not. I hope this was helpful, guys. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Click that bell for notifications. Drop a like and comment. Have a great rest of your day. Take care.